The Photoshop toolbar by default is cumbersome. Why? It's not Adobe's fault. You see, we all humans wear clothes, right? Most of us do. Can a child of three and an adult of 63 wear the same t-shirt? No, right? Then why use the same toolbar? So let's say you have to use the patch tool. So first you would think, which tool group does patch tool belong to? You would find that, oh, it might be in the spot healing brush tool group. So you're gonna have to click and press and then choose the patch tool. Isn't that difficult? Couldn't we just click once and select the patch tool, right? Today I'm gonna share with you a step-by-step -step procedure to create your dream toolbar, customized to your preferences and your workflow. Unfortunately, it will lack the make it pop button, but we're gonna do it. So without any further ado, let's get started. Back in the magical world of Photoshop and to customize the toolbar, you would click on the three dots right there, click and hold again, it's cumbersome, and choose edit toolbar. The other way is, let's cancel this, go to edit, and then toolbar if you don't see those three dots. Now, let's start with the steps. Step number one, I want you to ask yourself this simple question. What are the tools that you haven't used in the last 30 days? Remove them. So for me, I don't use the artboard tool ever because I'm not into graphic designing and stuff. These two tools are useless. Single row marquee tool, single column marquee tool, maybe 0.001% of people use this. I have never found an application for it. So remove both of those. Lasso and polygonal lasso is fine. Let's remove the magnetic lasso tool. There are much better alternatives. The only time I use the perspective crop tool is for tutorials, slice tool, slice select tool, I see no use, frame tool, again, there's even a count tool. Let's remove all of that. Now you might want to keep the 3D material eyedropper tool if you do more of 3D, but I seldom do it. Seriously, red eye tool even now? It used to be a problem of the past. No use of pencil tool or the color replacement tool. That's absolutely destructive. While we do have the pattern fill adjustment layer, which is adjustable, why do we need pattern stamp tool? Destructive tools like this is destroying Photoshop. Paint bucket tool, really in 2020? Come on, man. Blur tool is useful, especially with mask. When you have a very hard mask, you can select the mask, choose the blur tool, and then soften it up a little bit. Sharpen tool, not very useful, but let's just keep it. Smudge tool is also important for the mask. So if you have a halos, you can push them in with the smudge tool. Dodge and burn tool, absolutely destructive. Sponge tool, again destructive tools that used to be in the very old versions of Photoshop which has continued their heritage even if it has no applications. Now I'm removing these convert point tool, delete anchor point tool because I don't need that. We can easily access them with shortcuts. If you want to know more about the pen tool, watch this video, you can access them with shortcuts. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove some additional tools from here. Now you do need the hand tool and the zoom tool, but you don't have to select the tool to do it. To zoom in, we press control or command and the space bar and drag it right or left to zoom in and zoom out. So that's not required as a tool space. Also for the hand tool, you just hold the space bar and move around. You don't really need it, so let's just remove it as well. Now you don't wanna be clicking and holding on a tool, open up the tool group and select the tool you like. It's a long process. Which brings us to step number two, which is ungroup all tools. We will group some of them later, but for right now, let's ungroup all of them. Let's make all of them individual. So for instance, the rectangular marquee tool and elliptical marquee tool are grouped together. All you gotta do is to click and drag and bring it outside. Now they are separate. As you can see right here in the toolbar, they are now separate individual tools. They are not inside a group, which is amazing. Similarly with the lasso tool and the polygonal lasso tool, just click and drag it out. Make them individual. Let's do the same for all of these tools right here. Oh, I forgot to remove the magic wand tool, or in other words, the tragic wand tool. We don't use that. Now in my case, there is an exception. I would keep these shape tools in one group. Now if you're a designer and you're more into graphic design stuff, you might want to separate it. But then again, if you're a hardcore graphic designer, you might already be using Adobe Illustrator in the first place. Step number three, out of the tools that you do use, find the tools that you very rarely use, right? You do use those tools, but not so frequently. What are those tools? In my case, I'm gonna show you what those tools are. So for me, I don't always use the polygonal lasso tool. So according to step number three, all you have to do that the tools that you use rarely, you do use them, but not so often, those tools, you're gonna group them with the main tool of that group because you don't want these tools to take extra space in your toolbar. 
you would always be using the lasso tool anyway. So put that in the lasso tool group right there. Similarly, do the same with the other tools. Again, for me, I don't often use the mixer brush tool. So I'm going to put it inside the brush tool group. Also, the sharpen tool, not very often. So let me put that in the blur tool group. All right, seems like I'm done. Moving on to step number four, and that is prioritize. Ask yourself this simple question. What are the tools I use the most? And the tools that you use the most will go at the top and the tools that you least use will go at the bottom, just in a descending order. Now, while you're ranking your toolbar playlist, do keep in mind to keep the songs of the same genre together. In other words, do keep similar tools together. For example, most Photoshop users, including me, use the move tool the most. It's the most fundamental tool all of us need. The next tool, let's say you use the rectangular marquee tool. And the next one you have kept as crop tool. And then you move on to the object selection tool. It can get very confusing. Keep the selection tools together. So instead, let's say if you use the crop tool the most, you're going to keep it second instead and then all the selection tools together and then move on to other genres of songs. Make sense? All right. So for me, I most use after the move tool, the quick selection tool. Then of course, the lasso and the polygonal lasso to correct those selections, rectangular and elliptical. So have a look. All of these selection tools are in order. The next most important tool for me is definitely the brush tool. Now, I do definitely use the brush tool more than the rectangular marquee tool, but I'm not going to put it right here because then the selection tools won't be together. I want to keep them clubbed together. So that's how you need to rank. Rank it according to the tools that you most use, but do keep similar tools together at the same time. Moving on to step number five, find out the buttons and features that you do not use in the toolbar and simply remove them. For example, right here, the quick mask button, we don't use that button, we just press Q for it. So in the show option right here, we don't want to see it. So just click on it, unclick it, it's gone now. We don't use this one as well. You definitely need the foreground and the background. And if you want to keep these three dots, you can keep them on if any time you want to edit the toolbar. The sixth and the final step and the most important step is simply save this as a preset because Photoshop can reset, Photoshop can just crash or maybe you change the tools here and there just to have a backup, save this as a preset. And to do that, all you got to do is to click on save preset, locate where you want to save it. And I'm going to save it as Unmesh Dream Toolbar one because I already have a version right there and let's save it. Now, anytime you just jumble it up here and there or something goes wrong with the toolbar, you can always click and hold on the three dots, choose edit toolbar and then click on load preset and choose Unmage Dream Toolbar one or whatever name you had given to it and click on load and click on done. Now look at the scenario and compare. Now, if you have to choose the batch tool, you don't have to find out which group it is, click and hold and then select the patch tool. All you got to do is to just click on the patch tool. That's all there is to it. I hope this video helped you create your dream toolbar. And if it did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. I would like to take this moment and thank all these nice and amazing people for supporting Piximperfect on Patreon and helping keep Piximperfect free for everybody forever. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.